The lenses of cameras have variable focal lengths, so that camera motion can be made without actually moving the camera. To access camera settings, there are two ways. The first is by selecting the cameras on the menu here on the preview window, or by going to the stage, then selecting camera. And as you can see, as I switch between those lenses, the camera seemingly moves. But it doesn't, only the focus changes. The smaller the lens size, the further away objects will appear. And with the slider bar, you can manually choose the lens size you want. But for all cameras, the default lens size is 50 millimeters. Also take note, the names are all in blue, so that means that you can generate keyframes in iClone. So let's add in a new camera, then open up the tracks for our new camera, Camera 01. And let's specifically look at the lens track. So if on the first keyframe, I choose 20 millimeters. Then for this frame, I choose 200 millimeters. Watch how the camera focus will move from this frame to this frame. Since you can modify the camera views using the lens function and the lens can be set as a key in the timeline, you can create pretty cool visual effects like isometric, fisheye, or vertigo effects. Fisheye is an effect usually used to create the feeling of curved view. In photography, a fisheye lens is a wide-angle lens that takes an extremely wide, hemispherical image. Since fisheye lenses can create unique, distorted appearances, they are often used to create the vision of creatures or wildlife. To create a fisheye effect, choose a very low setting for your lens. The lowest you can go is 12mm. Notice that this will take us pretty far away from our scene, but we can zoom all the way closer to anything, like our actor here. The character was not distorted, but the lens has a very small setting, so you can see how the character's face is distorted. The distortion is greater the closer the camera is and along the edges of the preview screen. An isometric visual effect is a method to visually represent three-dimensional objects in a two-dimensional project. This means you can have 3D text appear 3D, but in a 2D environment. To create this effect, it's similar to fisheye effect. Make sure your camera is looking directly at your object, then set the camera lens to the lowest setting of 12mm. Zoom back into your object, but make sure you maintain the camera's level to look directly at your object. Notice the difference between a regular camera lens of 50mm and then that of an isometric camera effect. Vertigo is a lens effect to create a falling sensation. The character doesn't move, but the background seems to rush up on the character, giving a feeling of realization of a critical moment in a movie, or the feeling of falling or great fear. To create a vertigo effect is a little tedious, but well worth the effort. We were required to use the timeline, so for this first key, set the camera at the distance from our target. Then at keyframe 60, I will change the lens from 50 to 200. This makes the camera seem to move closer to our target, but so far we haven't created the effect yet. To create the effect of vertigo, we'll have to create a transform for every key to move the camera away from our target, to keep the perspective about the same. So for this key, let's move the camera either backwards or forwards to maintain the perspective that the character does not move. Then do the same for the next keyframe. You always want to make the camera appear it didn't move by having the target appear to be the same size. You have to make a transform for every single keyframe between the first and the last key you set. Now let's play back and watch what happens. Again, making a vertical effect can take some effort, but the end result is well worth it. Depth of field, or DOF, is another good way to create emotion with your shots. Usually depth of field is used to point attention at an object or a character that is of particular interest in the scene. To create a depth of field is simple. On the modify panel, just select the box to turn on depth of field. Once it is on, the whole scene will be blurry, but we want to create a focus for our shot. There are two ways to do that. We can manually increase the range so the things in the foreground is more clear. Or we can use the pick focus and choose an object. An iClone will choose the focus for the object. I prefer to pick target then fine tune the focus afterwards. To understand range, I want to show you a quick experiment. 
If I set the focus around 900, but set the range at 300, notice how there is a bar of a clear vision, but beyond and in front of that bar is a blurry area. Notice as I increase the range, the bar will become larger. If you look closely, you can see this area is now no longer blurry as it once was before. Therefore, we can create a blurry foreground and a blurry background and only focus on the middle. So the idea of range is that you can focus on something in the foreground, but also include a little bit more just beyond the target to create a more dramatic effect, or create a shot in which you want your audience to ignore the foreground and background and look at the object in the middle. Did you also notice that all the settings for depth of field are blue? This means all the settings can create keys. So in this scene, I can choose multiple targets. So at this keyframe, focus on this object. On the next keyframe, focus on the other object further back in the scene. Therefore, from this keyframe to this keyframe, you will see the DOF changes places. So let's play back and watch. Depth of field and lens effects are used in most cinema movies to add emotional effects, and now you have the skills to add them to your next iClone video productions. Good luck and have fun!